I do want to talk about the Equality Act that passed in the House. And I don't say, I don't want to say her name. I just call her Miss Demon Seed, mm -hmm. the, the woman who, you know, believes in Jewish space lasers and all types of stuff. I don't like her at all. I don't want to speak her name. She is a demonic force. Yeah. But uh, I want to say this. We have a very diverse audience, you know, because we as black folks, we aren't, aren't a monolith. Some of y'all out there don't like Miss Demon Seed, but you agree with how she feels about transgender folks or how she feels about LGBT folks. And I know that because I've been on these airways and y'all have called in and said certain things. So I want you to think when you see her, this QAnon conspiracy theory person spitting out things about people that, and you agree with those things, you should really check yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's really important to point out that there are black people who are transgender and who are LGBT. And I want you all to know out there listening that black LGBT people, they are at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to health care. Mm -hmm. They have high rates of violence and they have the highest rates of hate crimes. Mm -hmm. So I want to give you a few, a few stats before you all call in and ramble about what you want to ramble about outside of your God or whatever the case may be, do we want folks to be protected to be able to get a job? Black LGBT folks are 1.4 times more likely to experience physical violence and two point times more likely to experience threats and intimidation during incidents of hate violence. The experience of hate violence is disproportionately impactful for black LGBTQ folks and HIV affected black folks. This is very important. The majority of the victims of hate crimes, of hate violence in 2013, I know it was a while ago, that, that's the stat that I could find, 89% were people of color. 89%. And as I said, black LGBT folks are disproportionately affected by hate crime violence. I also want you to know in 27 states, LGBT folks do not have any state protections against being denied housing. So think about this. You know that black folks have an issue being denied housing. So what if you're black and you're LGBT? Regardless of whatever God you believe in, I would assume if you believe in Christ, you don't want folks to be denied housing. And now imagine the the intersectionality of being black and being LGBT. In 31, 31 states lack protections regarding access to education for LGBT folks. That sounds like straight out of Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. And 38 states lack protections for LGBT folks regarding jury service, mm -hmm. serving on a jury. That's Jim Crow through and through. And again, there are black folks who are LGBT. In at least half of these states, same-sex couples can, can get married one day and legally denied service at a restaurant or be evicted from their apartment because they're LGBT. How many black folks do you know who are evicted from their apartment or denied service? We see these, these damn Karens. Again, imagine if you're black and you're LGBT. Mm -hmm. So I want you all to know this Equality Act is not a white thing. It's not a white thing at all. There are poor folks who are transgender. There are black folks who are lesbian. There are we, across the board. Right. So I would think us, us, we had really have to have some compassion. I see some folks on social media saying, why are they getting rights like the 1964 Civil Rights Act? There are black people who are LGBT. Bayard Rustin, who fought for that Civil Rights Act, was a black gay man. Mm -hmm. And if you love black people, you can't throw black folks away. So this Equality Act for me is a good thing. Sadly, I doubt it will go through the Senate. And then that, that Miss Demon Seed who put, up, who put that horrible thing up, uh, male or female, trust the science. What's ironic about that is that when it comes to transgender folks, you should trust the science. According to Harvard, most, I'm sure Miss Demon Seed would like Harvard. Ain't a lot of black folks at Harvard. I'm sure she would like it. Uh, it says that science tells us 
that gender is certainly not binary. It may not even be linear. It may not even be, it's a, a spectrum. Harvard says that. Now for me, my gender is very binary for me, but it literally tells us it's not. That is the science. So she is wrong when it comes to that. So I just wanted to say that, that I know a lot of y'all have some feelings and we have to get beyond our own prejudices because you don't know there could be a gay man who's fighting for your rights. Mm -hmm. There could be a trans person who's fighting for your rights. And the Equality Act is a good thing. And I would hope that collectively we can get behind that. So I always want to make sure I remind y'all of black people who are part of this community. And then they experience racism from the white gay community. Mm -hmm. They experience homophobia from the white gay community. There's this thing called the ballroom scene. If you've seen the, the show Pose, uh, it's, it's a subculture of black and Latin folks uh, having their own kind of pageants, if you will. The reason why they began doing their own pageants is because white drag queens in the 1920s would not let them in their pageants. Racism even trickling down to drag queens in the 1920s. At the end of the day, we are black people and we can't throw away other black people. And we have to stand by and support when other black folks are getting access to fair treatment. Reese, your thoughts. Right, I think you nailed it because I, I, so often what I hear is, um, well, why are the Democrats always catering to the LGBTQ community? What are black folks getting? There's nothing for black people. And they make this argument when it comes to immigration and other things, black people, uh, exist in all of these spaces. Black people have all of these identities. We are not a, we're not a monolith, as you stated. And I don't think that anybody has a right for their beliefs to result in the mistreatment and discrimination, and in some cases, uh, harming, you know, physical endangering of, of, of people just because they don't necessarily understand the science of it, if you want to put it that way, they don't understand the humanity of it, which is really the issue. It's a humanity issue, not uh, as much as it is an identity issue, because everybody has the right to health care, has the right to housing, has the right to education. And, uh, you know, Black people who also intersect with this LGBTQ community, um, they get it the worst. They get it the worst. I mean, the way that Black transgender women are murdered at this, in, this, in this company, it's, I mean, in this country, it's an epidemic of violence against these women. And it takes absolutely nothing away from you to have a trans person, for instance, get rights, to have them be able to choose which bathroom they want to use. It doesn't make your your little Johnny or your little Debbie, um, any, any, any way disadvantaged because they want to play on the soccer team or something like that. I mean, just take your ego out of it, take your ignorance out of it and just think about the humanity of other people. And I'm not saying, oh, we're all human, ignore people's identities. First of all, respect people's identities. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's number one, respect their pronouns, respect however they want to identify and whatever sexual orientation they want to identify with. But beyond that, respect their humanity. If you can do nothing else, you can at least respect their humanity. And if you can't, that's a reflection on you more than anything else. Yeah. David? Yeah, no, I, I Reezy hit it. Respect people's humanity. Look, um, <clears throat> I don't claim to be an expert in understanding all the issues and challenges involved with being gender fluid or non-binary or transgender. Me as a citizen, I would, and as a person, I would rather err on the side of trying to understand people and relate to people as people than to err on the side of, well, here's my world and this might be slightly outside of my world. That's me as a citizen. As a journalist and an analyst, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm right there again with what Reese was saying, um, at a certain level, this just boils down to people and Americans have rights. I agree with the point you were making, Clay, that we can't throw away Black people in any space. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget that there are Black transgender uh, Americans and Black LGBT Americans writ large. But let's just say, for argument's sake, even if you're talking about, let's say you're talking about a white trans person. Yeah. They should have rights. And yes. we can you talk about something like the for the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, which was a key point that turned on, not in the trans struggle as much I'm thinking of right now as the, like the same-sex marriage debate. 
Mm -hmm. Of course, that was written with Black people in mind, but the underlying idea behind it is everybody should be treated equally. And so you can have a debate about which laws to pass or how to navigate some of these issues like bathroom issues, but the American idea is people are people and people are citizens and citizens have rights and the law is supposed to treat them equally. People also have the right to say, I'm not down with same-sex marriage or I have a discomfort with, uh, with uh, you know, my lack of understanding about the transgender community. People have that right, it's a free country. But this country isn't governed by your feelings. It's governed by laws and rights. And if we aren't delivering equal, equal rights to people, then we're doing something wrong as a society. This country is not governed by feelings. I like that. One thing that I will say though, uh, and I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I just wanna add this to it as far sure. as People have a right to feel how they feel. And I get that. But if your opinion is rooted in oppression, that's a problem. Right. You know, oh, if, yeah, if no, your I'm opinion, not agreeing with it. I'm saying no, no, they have no, a right I know, to I know, it. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I, but, you know, we have some folks out there, you know, who listen who are very conservative. So I just want, you know, when you hear that, you know, mm -hmm. you have a right to your opinion. Uh, yeah, but if it's rooted in oppression, that, that's an issue. Right. Like, my, my opinions are not rooted in oppression in any way. I don't want to see you know, as much as I'm critical of white supremacy and, and white folks, I don't want to see white people lose their rights. I don't believe in anything like that. As much as I, I can't stand guns, and I'm trying to get a gun license now, believe it or not, I don't want to see the Second Amendment gone. Like, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't, that's, I don't, I don't want to see that. that. I can't stand guns. I'm afraid to get a gun license, but I don't want to see it go away. So, and also, so yeah, and I, I always say this too. I always say this as well. Disagreeing with somebody, somebody's sexual orientation is like disagreeing with the sun rising or the sun setting. Right. There's nothing to disagree or agree with. Right. It is the sun rising and the sun setting. There is nothing to agree or disagree with. And if you want to inject your religion, your faith, your conservative values, your Confederate flag, whatever you want to inject in there, there is nothing to agree or disagree with. It is the sun rising and the sun setting. It is as natural as that. Yeah. Can, so, yeah. I, so, can I, can I add ahead, to that please. too? Listen, if you don't want to be involved in a same-sex marriage, then don't do it. That's right. your <laughs> right. personal decision on what you make about your life. That don't have nothing to do with nobody else. Mind your right. damn business. If you can't do nothing else, you can mind your business. Like you said, right. it's not a matter of opinion on what somebody else does. Opinion is what I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a cis heterosexual woman who's married to a cis heterosexual man. That's my choice in life. Everybody has the right to make their choice. And so I, I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to jump on you, David, because I do agree with the whole notion of like, well, you're entitled to your opinion. Right. Eh, you're entitled to live your life in the way that you want to live it. And somebody might not agree with that. And it's not their business for how you live your life either. So I think we have to just, we have to be careful about saying it, you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to your way of life and everybody else is entitled to their way of life as long as right. that doesn't infringe on somebody else's rights um, to, you know, to, to have all the things that are in the Constitution or just our hu human rights. Right. No, I agree. I agree. With I think that's well said. Um, and just, you know, since we, since you took it down this road, I'm just going to say, right, just to emphasize, right, I look at myself and I say, okay, as a cisgender, heterosexual, married, middle-aged guy, um, you know, the world is made for me in a lot of ways. And again, I would rather err on the side of saying, let's make the world a place where everybody has access, where everybody has opportunities, where everybody has legal rights, rather, and, and let's work, let's have a world where people understand people, even if they're not part of their worlds, mm -hmm. rather than, uh, rather than saying, oh, well, I have this or that bias, and therefore I don't want people to even have rights or opportunities. It, 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 it's a, it, I think it's a narrow-minded way to look at it. And I will just say that, um, Risa, you made this point a minute ago, um, it shouldn't be zero sum. If, if, if a party or a president works for the rights of LGBT Americans, that's not taking anything away from whatever is being done or not done on behalf of African Americans or other communities. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, these things are 
yes, there's a finite amount of political capital in any given situation, but these, this should not be a zero sum game between, oh, let's focus on, on black civil rights and not LGBT civil rights or vice versa. And can, and can I, I add one more good, thing please. Yeah, mm -hmm. on, that, on that topic? Because I remember when I asked, and not to change the topic altogether, but when I asked Ice Cube, we're a black woman in the contract for black America. People are like, well, shouldn't it already include it? It's black overall. And it's like, there are different layers and there are different communities. And there are different Specifics. aspects of our shared experience, uh, our collective experience, I should say, as black people that have to have special attention brought to it. So just in the same way that I say, hey, you're missing out on the black woman part of the black agenda. Hey, you're missing out. And I did also call out the fact that there was nothing in there about the LGBTQ community and his black agenda. So we have to realize that your need being served by this specific bill or this specific uh, particular advocacy um, not being met is not the same as the community's need because all of these things have to be addressed.